and thank you for joining us today on how to predict more sales with personalization. So personalization has been one of the key buzzwords floating around the e-commerce industry for, for some time and the promise of personalization is huge. However, I'm, I'm sure most of you will agree up until now it's been pretty difficult to implement. So Today's talk is all about how SLI can help you predict more sales with personalization. Um, please note this is a near live webinar where the content has been pre-recorded into our webinar software so that latecomers can begin the presentation from the start. All attendees will be muted, however questions can be asked throughout the webinar using the QA button at the bottom of the screen and on the screenshot you can see there. And these will be responded to via email after the webinar has completed. So just to introduce ourselves, um, my name is Chris Edge and I'm head of the customer success team here in the UK for SLI, which involves the onboarding of new clients, um, ensuring all clients have the correct level of training, and the understanding of SLI products, and working on a one-to-one -one basis with the clients to continue help to optimize and get the best return on investment from SLI products. And I'm also joined today by Sophie Wilson. She is the client sales consultant at SLI who will be taking you through a demonstration of SLI's latest product, ESP, or Enhanced Search Personalization. So what you'll learn today in our webinar is how to personalize the whole shopping experience that your customers have, and how to do it in real time. And, and that's really the key, real time. So as your shoppers are acting, clicking, and navigating on your site. Uh, we'll also teach you how to shorten the path of purchase uh, and what you can do to deliver a, a personalized experience to all of your visitors, not just existing customers, but also those, those crucial first-time visitors. And, and then also how continuous learning can help you generate compound revenue quarter after quarter. And I'm sure for all e-commerce vendors like yourselves, more revenue is extremely important. And to, to kick things off, a recent study that we distributed to all retailers at our SLI Connect event in New York this, uh, at the end of last year revealed that all but one of the, the, those retailers there chose personalization and relevance as a top trend impacting their, their e-commerce operations this year. Personalization is a very real and a huge opportunity for e-commerce businesses. Uh, we recognize that to buy anything at any time, the power of shopping and specifically shopping online can really achieve new highs if we could just add on that, you know, that just for me personal touch to experience. And perhaps that's driven due to the fact that we ourselves in the industry, we're shoppers as well. Um, you know, don't you, don't you love it when the barista of your local Starbucks says, hey, how's it going, and, and asks you, if you want your standard triple shot latte or espresso or, or whatever you normally drink. And, and that's really the key to personalization. It creates a powerful and positive emotion. And that emotion almost compels you to buy. It creates emotion and, and drives an action. So I just use a Starbucks example. You probably have stories about great personal shopping experiences yourselves from could be a department store or a hardware store or your favorite bar or restaurant. And you really wish that you could replicate that amazing experience for your online shoppers. And it's so powerful because we've experienced it ourselves. So in the industry, we're, we're bought in to that personalization is important. And the good news is that online consumers are reacting favorably to it as well. And there's a a great study that Accenture posted last month where they pulled over 1,500 US and UK consumers. And shoppers have a very positive attitude towards personalized offerings and services. Whether it's just remembering their name or displaying relevant product recommendations or knowing what they purchased in the past, 75% of the respondents to the survey were more likely to buy if there was at least one of those elements of personalization. And that's really the key. We believe it, our customers believe it, and they're acting on it. 
As, as online retailers, you work really hard to get visitors to your site, but it's even harder to convert them once they're there. But personalization gives us an opportunity to drive that conversion rate up. But the first thing, what is personalization really in the e-commerce space? And I think a simple definition of it comes down to a custom response to consumers. And that custom response is based on who they are and if there's a trigger or a signal that we can pick up on to then display or provide that great customer experience. So ideally, personalization is a true one-to-one -one relationship in which each individual customer, as they come to your site, get a perfect data-driven, unique experience that only that one shopper can get. So if that is the ideal vision, let's imagine this scenario and what could be a very standard visit to your, to your site. And for sake of argument, let's call him Roberto, and he's a very keen, keen cyclist who also participates in triathlons. And he lands on your site, so, so there's Roberto, there, there's only one Roberto for say postal code EC1B, who's a male, he's about 30 years old, who's also crazy enough to do triathlons. But he's also the purchaser of a red bike helmet by the Ironman brand, they bought in size large. Now, there are lots of things that we could potentially recommend based on this Ironman preference. It could be an Ironman brand tri-top in large, it could be black compression, cast sleeves, uh, red triathlon bike shoes, it's going to match his, his tri-top, he's got a fancy um, triathlon bike with kind of fast aero wheels on it, it's got air warmer, we could suggest arm warmers and bike gloves and bike shorts, all of those things to do with Iron Man, but perhaps not that Iron Man. And without relevancy, how do you know that this isn't the Iron Man that he's looking for? Personalization is a powerful tool, but it can go wrong very fast if relevance is based on just a simple keyword. But I think you get the idea that this one-to-one -one perfect personalization is almost a, a utopian ideal of what personalization can do to convert more shoppers because it's almost magically presenting the products that are just for that one unique buyer which is going to get that conversion. And it's set a great goal, but the, the reality is, is a little bit different. And that's really both in terms of user experience, implementation, and the potential return on investment, which is really important to every retailer. In the example I just showed, it requires that you already know who Roberto was and that he's already bought something for you. However, the vast majority of your shoppers are first-time visitors, so how is personalization going to work for them? If somebody has bought something from you to deliver a one-to-one -one personalized experience in that utopian ideal, it requires them to be logged in. And we know people really only log in at the checkout phase and not when they're shopping up front. And you're certainly not going to interrupt the shopper, shopper and say, hey, stop, you know, log in first and then we're really going to personalize everything brilliant for you. And imagine doing that on mobile, you know, um, people are just not going to log in before they start buying. And it's basically because the personalization experience needs to be seamless, just like everything else in the shopping experience. And it doesn't stop there. This utopian ideal would require a ton of data and complexity and storage and data databases to pass through and lots of personally identifiable information that you're storing. So as e-commerce sellers who have done projects before, you usually cringe as you see that, you know, that, that dreaded database visual that I've got on the slide, mainly because it usually comes along with a massive project that's going to take a long time, require a lot of security and privacy, privacy hassles, and, you know, of course, a huge budget. And really what we need to understand is that relevance is personalization. Personalization we know can have a big payoff, but delivering it can be, can be really hard. 
Fortunately, it doesn't have to be that daunting, be-all, end-all type of solution. There's a spectrum of options for you to jump on board personalization, and you can start to do that today. And you can start, the best way to start is with relevance. It's possible for you to deliver experience that feels like that one-to-one -one, um, experience with consumers to shoppers. And relevance really at the end of the day is personalization. And the great news is, is that you probably already have access to the information that, can that you can provide consumers with what they feel is a personalized experience. You know what product they clicked on in a session, you know what they've searched for, you know how the breadcrumb trail and navigation links or any facets of filtering that they're doing. So start with understanding their behaviors and you've already taken your site again in real time in, this, in that session to use this to determine simple segments like gender or brand. It could be location, you may know their IP address, uh, you certainly know what season it is out there and you know the customer doesn't even have to act but you're probably already doing merchandising you know around the season. So really start off with relevance around some simple segments and of course it's about the payoff. You know the good news is the ROI is proven for relevant product dis discovery experiences today. Already things like search and navigation and recommendations that you, you probably already got, plus those e-commerce functions are much simpler to, to implement and they're not really that budget, budget busting like the big database projects are. And that's really what spurred us on here at SLI. And it's because we can see this every day. And as much as retailers like to believe that they're leading the way on personalization, the consumer is ultimately the one that decides what is relevant and valuable and appropriate. And, and they vote with their searches and the clicks and, and ultimately their cash. At SLI, we see this every single day. As you can see from this graph, we served over 18 billion search queries. Um, last year, so around 50 million searches a day, and that has a wealth of insight into delivering a personalized experience for shoppers wherever they are. And that user behavior, along with data from other multiple sources that you have at your disposal, can take relevance and personalization to the next level. Basically, basically you can plug that information into a machine learning platform like SLI's introduction to the buyer engine, which is a machine learning platform for e-commerce. And you want that engine that continuously learns and improves and is built to do one critical thing, and that's to predict what shoppers are most likely to buy right now. And that's a personalized solution, something that learns with the experience of your shoppers and what they're actually doing. And the result of this can be pretty amazing. Here at SLI, we talk a lot about if you could create a virtuous cycle for your business, you're going to succeed. A business that can generate compound growth quarter after quarter, year after year, are the ones that are going to stand out. It's not just about you know boats rising with the tide and flat growth. We are going to see some good growth in e-commerce, but the ones that are going to get compound growth are the ones that are going to, ex going to succeed the most. And so personalization powered by machine learning really is a great story because better user experiences leads to more user behavior, which leads to more traffic, which leads to more people coming to your site and entering into that user experience, and so on and so on. So compound growth through personalization can be a huge win for you and it's going to help you stand out from the crowd. So with that, we want to introduce Enhanced Search Personalization, or ESP, and to dig into how exactly that personalization is going to work, I'm going to hand you over to Sophie, who's going to take you through this. So thanks, Chris. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, like we said, I'm going to be talking about SLI's personalization solution um, that we introduced um, just a few weeks ago, um, Enhanced Search Personalization, or ESP for short. 
But first, I just want to take a step back and give some insight into why SLI decided to move more into this personalization space. So SLI um, found that in the e-commerce industry, that search providers and personalization providers were very distinct, separate entities, and there was very little overlap between them. So very few providers actually understood the challenges and issues of both experiences. And because they're operating two different technologies as well, they're not able to leverage the data that they're gaining from both sides and that the learning and the learning that they're getting in order to make those experiences better. We also found through our research that a lot of the search experiences we received, whether built in house or on other platforms, not all of them had the most relevant experience. And in some ways, what they were trying to do, which became known in our product development team as the band-aid factor, is that they were trying to fix the irrelevant search by adding personalization on top of it in order to make it more relevant. However, then you have this issue that Chris discussed um, with those first-time visitors. Um, and these are people that you know absolutely nothing about. They've just come to your site. Um, for the first time, and it's really critical that you give them that good first impression. If you don't know anything about them, what kind of experience are they going to have on your site from the minute they arrive? So as I said, it's extremely critical that you're providing a good experience, whether they're a first time visitor or if they're logged in. You need to make sure that they're not bouncing off the site before you've had a chance to learn from them, and of course the chance to personalise them. So just as an example, there's this person that you don't know anything about, and they've searched for grey boots. So you want to make sure that even though you don't know anything about them, that you're showing them the most relevant results for that search, and what's relevant at that particular moment. And that's really what the SLI Bio Engine is doing. It's taking into account the visitors' activities, it's looking at time factors, and it's bringing in what's trending as well as what's seasonal and making sure that the things that are the most relevant at that time. And then, of course, what the customer is more likely to buy. <clears throat> it's also interesting as well, because I think even from that search query, there's some sort of personalization or segmentation that's happening, because different groups of people with different segments describe things using different language. So the results are optimized for that particular query. So, I mean, for that example, if someone typed in gray boots, versus maybe charcoal boots, the order of the results will be optimized based on what they search for. So really what we're trying to achieve with ESP is the box on the right, um, increased revenue and lifetime value. So of course we're trying to make sure that the revenue is increasing as much as possible, but also that lifetime value of the shopper is maximized. So for that first point, relevancy is very important from the moment the search, customer searches or navigates. Again, making sure everyone, else, everyone on your site has the most relevant experience and being able to adapt and refine the experience in real time. So of course, people do shop for different things in the same session. They may all be doing their Christmas shopping in one day, or they could have the same search term but looking for very different things, like in Chris's Ironman example earlier. They may have their child's second birthday party a couple of months ago and they needed decorations and now they're coming back to look for decorations but for their grandmother's 90th. So they don't necessarily want the same products. And that's again making sure that it's relevant and the experience is good and that they're not bouncing from the site and looking somewhere else. So SLI is always trying to connect people to the products they want to buy as quickly as possible by being able to predict what they want to buy and without having to put the work on their site. We don't want the customers to have to be refining or doing subsequent search terms in order to find what they want to buy. And this is especially critical within the mobile space as well, because we find that they've got a shorter time window to connect to these people and to the product, as well as the faster infiltrating experience in the mobile platform being within a very limited space, which isn't all that ideal. Um, and you want to connect them to the products as fast as you can to increase those conversion rates. With ASP, we provide a customized, personalized experience to every site. We don't have a one-size-fits-all, out-of-the-box personalization solution. So we're configuring it to what's going to 
um, be the most important factors to your shoppers and that's unique to your site. And again, making this a really unique experience that sets you apart from your competition. And it's going to increase the likelihood that people are going to return to your site. We also want to reduce the barrier to personalization. As we saw before with big data and huge projects, there's this utopian vision of what personalization can be. But there are some very simple things that you can do with the data that you already have and with the providers that you're already using. Just these simple changes can make the experience more personalized and increase revenue. So how does ESP actually work on your site? And what are the effects you're going to see? So if you have SLI Learning Search, we're promoting products that match the attributes of the products the shopper has already shown an interest in, products that they've already looked at. We aren't just boosting the products they're interested in, and I think that's really important. We're not filtering out any results, and we're not being as harsh as that. This is, again, because we're able to adapt in real time and understand that people may have been searching and shopping for somebody else initially. And now there's another person that they're shopping for. So you still have to be able to find those results, but naturally we want to boost the ones that we think are more appropriate. And the same goes for SLI navigation and the browsing experience. Again, we're promising products, promoting products to the top to match the shopper's interest, but we're not pre-selecting any filters. And again, on the no result page, we don't think that it's great that anyone doesn't find any results. We don't want a blank page. So we think it's actually best practice to show popular products from across the site so that you can find more relevant um, products to that individual um, that they've already shown an interest in. So you'll notice that I've mentioned several times that adapting during a session and retreat between sessions is extremely critical. Um, so we do consider time when we look at what the shopper has looked at. Um, so something that was looked at in previous sessions isn't rated or doesn't have as much weight as something in the current session. And then within the current session, something that's happened earlier has less impact than something that has happened just then. <clears throat> so to give you a little bit more insight um, as well as how it works, it's actually an evolution from our product, um, Personalized Recommendation product, that we've had for a couple of years now. Um, and we've been able to leverage that technology that we've already developed and use some of the insights we've gained from that and applied this to our search um, and navigation. So as I mentioned before, we're able to configure it specifically to your site. So we can choose what facets are going to matter the most to your shopper. So that could be, for example, if you're on a sports site, uh, it could be what team the shopper follows. Um, and then some shoppers are extremely brand loyal. And we can look at things such as gender, size, color, etc. And we can also consider a multiple of these factors and weight them accordingly. So if a brand, it could be worth 60%, whereas the color is only worth 40%. Now, in terms of on your site, this is only a small piece of code that goes onto the product page, and that's just so we can track what products the shopper is looking at. So going into practice, when somebody shops on your site and they do a search, the first thing we look at is relevancy. So for the term black boots, what we're looking at is actually relevant to that search term, and then on top of that, we apply learning. So we recognize the products returned according to their learning order, so that's, as I mentioned, taking into account visitor activity on the site um, and then what happened. So the buyer engine will present the products um, that are on that day the most popular and more likely for that search term that the customer is likely to buy. Um, and I think that's something that's worth highlighting which differentiates us. We're not trying to personalise rather than learning. We're able to add personalisation to that last step. Um, so it's personalising the relevance. So it's not just relevant to everyone, but it's hyper-relevant and personalised to that unique individual. So um, what I'm going to do now is just go through a quick example. Um, and this is ESP set up on one of our customer sites, um, footwear, etc. <clears throat> and they've actually set up a very simple personalisation, looking at the gender of the products people have looked at. 
So in this case, um, a woman has come onto the site and she's browsed for sandals. From the results, um, she selects the product that she's most interested in. She decides actually that she wants to specifically look at the brand sketches. And because we've learned that she's already interested in women's products, the women's products are boosted to the top of the sketches search. She continues to select a product that she's interested in. And here it's just nice to know that the recommendations at the bottom are showing other sandals very similar um, that she could look at as an alternative. Now, in another scenario, a man comes to the site. And because it's his first time on the site, um, he does a search for running shoes and he gets a mixture of men's and women's products. He clicks on a men's product, which was the first one. But he too also decides that he wants to search for sketches. But because he's already shown an interest in men's products, the men's sketches are at the top of the search. He then selects a sketches running shoe that he's most interested in. And again, the recommendations on the bottom right are all other sketches running shoes. So I know that happened all pretty quickly. Um, so I just want to show you the various screenshots side by side so you can differentiate between them. So if someone had come onto the site and searched for sketches and we didn't know anything about them before, then they would get this mix of um, men's and women's products on the left. Now in the first scenario that I showed with the woman who searched, um, she'd already shown an interest in women's products, so when she did the sketches that um, all the women's products were boosted to the top, and then below that, the same for the man, with the men's sketches promoted to the top. And I think you can see the continuity there. If you match the left to the right, um, the women's products in the initial search, they're promoted in exactly the same order. So, as I mentioned before, we're promoting things that are not just of interest to the shopper, but also in the order that they're more likely to buy them in. <clears throat> so, um, taking this example, looking at some of the effects of ESB, it does just seem really simple looking at the gender of what someone's looked at. But like Chris was saying, there are some things that we can do with very simple information that we've seen a huge difference. Um, so with this example on footwear, etc., we've seen a 10% increase in revenue per visitor, as well as they've seen a 5% increase in conversion rates. Um, and then another thing that was extremely interesting to look at is we saw a 5% increase in average order value. Um, so we looked back at the um, baskets and examined what people um, were putting into the baskets. And those that had more of a personalised experience actually purchased more items than those people who didn't have a personalised experience. So I think it goes to show that if it's making it easier for people to find the things they want to buy and their experiences are good, then they're more likely to stay on the site longer and perhaps purchase additional products. So, looking into the future of not just ESP and personalization, but in general, um, we do have some industry predictions from team here at SLI, and I guess the first is pretty obvious. We do just see the bar getting higher and higher, um, raised from what shoppers expect to see from websites and um, from their favourite retailers. Shoppers expect people to know who they are, understand what they're doing, and they're expecting their experiences to get even more sophisticated. Like we've already said, personalisation is a consistent hot topic due to the sophisticated demands of shoppers, and it needs to be creating seamless, unique experience that sets you out from the crowd. Um, we don't see this trend going away anytime soon. Um, so I think it'd be really interesting to see as well how these changes in behavior could actually drive the direction of personalization. So maybe things like the increase of mobile purchases may lead to more people doing searches with their voice rather than text. And then of course, if they're using voice, are they more likely to be using natural language queries? So what does this mean for personalization? There are some really interesting things that you can do with just voice. Do you need somebody to log in or can you identify them from their voice? Or can you 
find out if you've seen them on your site before. Can you work out their gender? Maybe an age bracket. And are you able to personalise what you're showing them just from hearing their voice? And in terms of SLI, we really do see personalisation as relevancy. And relevancy is at the very core of what we do. So we're going to keep on looking at the components of the shopping experience that we can personalise. Um, we just start with recommendations and email recommendations, and of course search and navigation. But then we know there are more components that we can expand to make the whole shopping experience more personalised. So again, with all this talk and hype on personalisation at the moment, here at SLI we want to keep you one step ahead of your customer's expectation. And we believe that ESP is one of these tools. Um, and we're doing a lot of testing to make sure that we're going to, if you're putting this on your site, it's going to have a positive impact on your revenue. So how to get ESP? Um, if you are already an SLI customer, um, you can talk to your customer success manager, um, or myself or Catherine. Um, and as I mentioned before, it's just a small piece of code that goes on your product page on your site. Um, and as an introduction, we are offering the first month free if you sign up within 30 days of this webinar. Um, and if you're not an SLI customer, please um, get in touch with your sales representative and um, we can go from there. Um, there all right, thank you Sophie, and thank you uh, chiefly to all the attendees of this webinar. Um, we hope you found it useful. Uh, if you have entered any questions in the Q&A box, uh, we will respond uh, to those via email. If you would like to know any more about SLI and our products, you can see from the email there, sli-systems.com slash resources. We have a, a ton of things on there from best practices and white papers, um, so you can really delve down um, further into all of our, our products, not just the SP. And of course, um, if you do have any queries after this webinar, please get in touch with your customer success manager for existing customers or sales rep, and we will be delighted to answer them. So. Again, thank you very much for attending. We hope you found it useful and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.